So you wanna be able to get your dogs on and off your dinghy safely and without damaging it. We've been sailing full time for almost eight months now. And since we have three big dogs, we've had to figure out how to get them on and off without damaging the dinghy. And we take them on and off almost every day. So I'm gonna provide you with eight tips that we use. So it hasn't always been smooth getting all three dogs onto the dinghy. So I'm going to show you a brief clip and highlight some of the errors that we made in our earlier attempts. S-T-A-Y. Okay. Come on, come. Touch. Try again. Down. Come on. There you go. Down. Stay. New best. Good girl. Ready? Ready? Oh, come on. Oh, we got it. We got it. Good girl. So the eight tips we're going to provide, four of them have to do with how to get your boat ready, and also training tips for the dogs. The first tip is to assess the dog's path in getting on and off the dinghy. You should determine how you're gonna get them on and off before so that it's not a mad rush. So what you wanna do is you wanna dog proof the areas that are in their path. For example, we replaced this very nice bow locker seat with a vinyl mat. It doesn't look as nice, but it's easier for the dogs and it doesn't ruin the seat. So take a look at the path that they're gonna use and if there's anything that you can replace with vinyl matting that's gonna give them more traction and less likelihood of being damaged, go ahead and replace it. The second tip is if your dinghy doesn't have non-skid rubber floor panels, install them. Our dinghy fortunately came with non-skid rubber floor panels and they've been wonderful. They provide us and the dogs with a lot of traction, which means no slipping, easier to get in and out. They're wonderful. Install them if you don't have them. Tip number three, use a mat to get them on and off the dinghy. We actually use a rubber floor mat that we've cut into a shape that's, that works well for the surface. And what this does is it provides them with more traction because they're gripping onto the mat rather than on your dinghy. And it also makes sure that the dinghy doesn't get damaged. Tip number four, have a routine to get them on and off the boat. One of the key things is that you get on and get everything situated before your dogs come across. What we do is we let them know if the mat's not down, then they can't come across, but if we put the mat down, it's time for them to come, and then we call them. We have to use stay a lot to make sure that they don't try to come across, but we do make sure that they don't get on while we're getting things ready. The same thing for exits. You make sure that the boat is safely positioned, put the mat down, and then have them go over. Make sure that they're not trying to jump across before you have safely secured the boat. Otherwise, you're gonna have a dog in the water and they're not fun to get out of the water. So now I'm gonna show you Jim using his routine to get the dogs on and off the boat safely. Mocha, 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 good boy Mocha.
The next four tips are grooming tips, and these tips are going to help your dog be more dingy friendly and also to help to provide them traction when getting on and off the boat. The first tip is to clip their nails. So why do you want to clip their nails? You want to clip their nails because if their nails are too long, they're going to have a hard time getting traction and they're going to use their nails instead of their paw pads for getting on and off and those nails can do damage to your dinghy so you want to avoid that. We clip their nails weekly with a clipper, just a regular clipper that you can find in the store, but you can also use a Dremel. Anything that can trim their nails works. We have two dogs that actually don't mind getting their nails trimmed, but we have a third dog that absolutely hates it. So actually the two of us, Jim and I, have to hold her down while we trim her nails, but they need to be trimmed, so we get it done. Tip number six is to moisturize your dog's paw pads. A dog's paw pads help them to grip surfaces, and as they wear down or get damaged, they don't grip as well. What you can buy is you can buy a paw bell, but what we actually use is just a shea butter moisturizing cream. And we use this weekly, or if we see a lot of wear and tear on their paw pads, we'll use it as often as daily. Tip number seven is similar. If you're seeing a lot of wear and damage on their paw pads, or if you find that even by moisturizing their paw pads, it's not enough and things are too slippery, what you can use is actually a paw wax. So what we like to use, and we've used before, is this Musher's Secret. You can buy this in stores. It's a wax, so it doesn't it doesn't make things slipperier because it's a wax, so it actually provides them with some additional traction. So the last and final tip is to trim your dog's paw pads. If there is too much hair between a dog's paw pads, this can cover the paw pads and not allow them to get sufficient traction. So you can just do this with a regular scissors. You go in and you trim between the pads, the excess hair, and that'll help them immensely with getting more traction with their paw pads. So I hope you have found this helpful. And if you have any questions for us, make sure to drop them in the comments below. We also do a travel vlog with our three dogs and sailing with 225 pounds of dog love is really quite an experience. So make sure to check out other videos in our channel and also make sure to subscribe.